Hello, welcome to the overview of Hardware Accelerator 2.0 introduced in AWR 294X devices. Here is the agenda. Initially, we will go over the key features of Hardware Accelerator followed by functions of subblock in the Accelerator engine, then a short note on programming the Hardware Accelerator and finally an example use case tying together all the subblocks. First, the introduction. The Radar Hardware Accelerator is a hardware IP that is tightly coupled to the DSP and offloads burden of frequently used computations in FMCW radar signal processing from DSP or main processor. FMCW radar signal processing involves pre-processing of input data followed by multiple FFTs to obtain the range, velocity and angle from the radar image and also supports detection of objects from it. The Hardware Accelerator 2.0 introduced in AWR 294X Gen 2 devices has more advanced features than Hardware Accelerator 1.0 in Gen 1 devices. The diagram on the right shows the Hardware Accelerator's position in AWR 294X devices. Here are the key features of Hardware Accelerator 2.0. It operates at a clock of 300 MHz, has a large local RAM size of 128 KB. With respect to pre-processing part, there is DC estimation and correction, interference localization and mitigation, multiple complex multiplication modes, zero padding, channel combination, etc. With respect to FFT computation, it supports 2048 point complex FFTs, of various sizes including 2 power n and 3 into 2 power n and 2d fft the internal fft bit width is maintained at 24 bits for good signal to quantization noise ratio hardware accelerator also supports compression and decompression of radar data using exponential golem encoder format with a dedicated engine for it in the post FFT processing part, Hardware Accelerator supports histogram or cumulative distribution function statistics along with 2D statistics. Various types of CFAR along with local maxima computation is also supported. One another important feature which Hardware Accelerator supports is the context switching. Other capabilities of Hardware Accelerator include FFT stitching, slow DFT mode, and safety features which include parity for memories and lockstep for finite state machines. Next, let's look at the block diagram of hardware accelerator. There are 8 local memories, each of 16 KB to stream data in and out of accelerator engine. This is also connected to 128-bit wide interconnect for data transfer to or from DMA or processor. Parameter set config memory block with 4 KB of RAM is used to pre-configure up to 64 parameter sets of hardware accelerator for sequencing various operations. The static registers are used to configure common registers of hardware accelerator which are not included in parameter set. The state machine controls the overall functioning of the accelerator including starting and stopping of computation, chaining or looping multiple parameter sets and also has the ability to provide trigger to or from DMA or processor. The input formatter formats the data coming from source memory which is fed to core computational engine. The core computational engine then perform operation of FFT or CFAR or local maxima or compression decompression. The output formatter then formats the data going into the destination memory after output from core computational engine. The numbers in the slide represent the flow of function of the hardware accelerator. The hardware accelerator operation is pre-configured by the parameter set memory initially along with the static registers. The hardware accelerator after initialization is enabled by the state machine followed by which data is brought in via the input formatter to the core computational 
unit. The core computational unit can then perform corresponding chosen operation and can finally store the result back in the destination memory via the output formatter after formatting as per the need. Let's look at the function of state machine block in more detail. It controls the overall function of hardware accelerator by enabling and disabling it and further can sequence a set of operations by looping over them. There are four incoming triggers which include immediate trigger, wait for software trigger, DMA based trigger and wait for hardware trigger. There are two outgoing triggers which are interrupt to main processor and trigger to DMA. Furthermore, it supports context switching which enables hardware accelerator to perform high priority tasks while pausing current sequence of operations. Then we have the parameter set config memory block. It has 64 parameter sets where each of them is a 1632 bit register. State machine can be programmed to loop through various parameter sets one after the other to achieve a particular operation as shown in the diagram on the right. Its function includes choosing and configuring of each of parts of computational engine, configuring the input or output data format, 2D memory indexing and also provides the trigger for each of parameter set. Parameter set configuration memory can be used to set up context switching operation using various struct variables of param ram index alt struct. Next, let's look at the input formatter block. It is used to access, format and feed data from source local memories to core computational engine as 24-bit complex samples. It supports input samples of 16-bit or 32-bit real or complex numbers, variable arrangement of input data with circular and shuffled addressing as shown in the diagram on the right. It has the provision to swap i and q bits of samples and also supports conjugation and sign extension of input samples. It also supports scaling and formatting of input samples of 16-bit or 32-bit wide to 24-bit wide data before feeding into core computational engine as shown in the diagram below. Next, let's look at the output formatter block. It is used to format and write data coming out of core computational engine to destination local memories in form of 16-bit or 32-bit real or complex number. It supports variable arrangement of input data as shown in the diagram on the right and also supports conjugation and sign extension of output samples can also swap i and q bits of samples and also skip samples if necessary. It also supports scaling or formatting of output samples 24-bit wide coming out of core computational engine to 16-bit or 32-bit samples as shown in the diagram below. The next block we are going to be looking into is the core computational unit where execution of all operations take place. The core computational unit has four paths as shown with FFT path at the top followed by CFAR path one level below then the compression or decompression path and then finally the local maxima path at the bottom. At that time in a parameter set only one of the paths can be active. The FFT path. The FFT path consists of pre-processing followed by windowing and FFT and finally the post-processing which involves magnitude or log magnitude operation. All the blocks can be bypassed through the parameter set registers. Pre-processing block can perform operations of DC estimation and correction, interference localization and mitigation, zero padding, channel combination, etc. 
Windowing operation is optional but is often required prior to performing FFT to mitigate the sink roll of leakage from one strong FFT bin to adjacent bins. Window RAM, which can hold up to 204832-bit words, are available to store window function. The table below shows the time taken to perform FFTs of various sizes. The CFAR path. CFAR or constant false alarm rate is used to detect objects in a single dimension, either range or Doppler, taking into consideration clutter, interference and noise. The CFAR path supports various types of CFAR algorithms including CFAR CA, CASO, CAGO and CFAR OS. As CFAR is to be implemented on a real input vector, it gives us the option of magnitude or log magnitude operation in case the input is complex in nature. Cyclic and non-cyclic mode of operation CFAR is supported with input from CFAR path being a list of indices corresponding to the peaks of objects detected. The compression path. In this path, compression engine can perform compression or decompression of data in the exponential golem encoder format. For compression path, it takes as input a fixed number of samples and returns a block of bits, it's a fraction of input samples. For example, a 33% compression ratio results in the average bit width after compression being one third of the bit width before being compressed. Similarly, decompression does the opposite of compression with the possibility of some quantization error. Compression ratio in the range of 33% to 50% is a good number giving good results. Compression ratio of 50% is a good middle ground and is nearly lossless while 33% is more lossy and is usable for range bins that are further away. The local maxima path. In this path, local maxima is computed in a 2D plane after angle FFT in the Doppler angle plane. The magnitude or log magnitude operation is optional in case the input 2D data is complex in nature. To find the local maxima of cell under test, it is compared across the neighboring cells and detection threshold before output of local maxima computation is stored as a bit pattern in the local destination memory. Other features like finding the local maxima of edge cells, circular shifting or wrap combination are supported in the local maxima engine path. In this slide, we'll discuss how hardware accelerator is programmed using software. The hardware accelerator 2.0 is programmed using the hardware accelerator driver function available in MCU plus SDK. The hardware driver has multiple APIs and struct variables to implement functionality of hardware accelerator 2.0 with ease. Some of the basic APIs include HUA open, HUA enable, HUA close, etc. Static and parameter set registers can be configured using the HUA common config and HUA config parameter set APIs respectively. Also, APIs for polling of parameter set finish, enabling or disabling interrupts are available. There are other numerous APIs in the driver function which help us to handle operation of context switching, read status registers, etc. This slide depicts how majority of repetitive operations could be performed by Hardware Accelerator 2.0 which can further be taken forward by DSP or processor for further processing. The first step is input from CSI2 or ADC buffer based on processor. Then there is signal pre-processing and range FFT after which this output can be stored in a relatively smaller L3 RAM in the device by passing it through the compression engine. 
and before performing Doppler FFT processing, the data can be retrieved from the RAM, input to the compression engine for decompression and then fed to Doppler FFT processing steps which can further be carried to angle FFT and CIFAR. The output of 2D CIFAR is stored in L3 RAM. The data from the L3 RAM is then fed to DSP for advanced algorithms of beamforming, clustering, tracking, etc. Finally, the classified output is returned back to the ECU via R5F through the mailbox. This slide shows the improvements of Hardware Accelerator 2.0 from Hardware Accelerator 1.0. From the top, you can see there is a larger clock speed, large local RAM size, large FFTs can be performed with various types of FFTs, more number of parameter sets, sophisticated interference and DC correction and estimation algorithms, multiple complex multiplication modes, more types of CIFAR, and large number of accelerator modes including compression and local maxima engine and finally advanced statistics with 2D statistics are possible with hardware accelerator 2.0. These are the references used in the talk. Thank you.